Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a training institute that is designed to improve your skills and knowledge in restorative dentistry and general dentistry. And today we're going to look at the application technique for rubber dam. Let's take a look at the securing of this W3 clamp with a loop of dental floss. Typically this is what people do, they loop around the bow. But a safer way to do this is to take the dental floss and thread it through one of the holes in the jaw. And after getting it through the hole, pulling it so it's about halfway in length pulled out through that hole. And then we're going to go ahead at this point and we're going to secure this by wrapping this three times around the bow. And after wrapping it three times, we'll take the other end of the dental floss and put it through the other hole. So you can see with this method that the entire clamp has been secured. So even if it fractures at any place along the back of that bow, we're still going to be able to grab hold of that clamp piece and pull it out of the patient's mouth without having them aspirate or swallow it. We're going to isolate today from tooth number 18 to tooth number 24. So this is a seven, right? This is the second molar. And we like to rotate the clamp from the lingual to the facial and get four points of contact to make sure that the clamp is stable. It's below the height of contour and it's got adequate tension. The holes that we marked for this particular case were done in the previous video. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the universal numbering system on these so that we know which hole goes where. I don't do this in the patient's mouth, but I think it's just good for the video today. And I'm going to punch the holes with the Ainsworth rotating punch and use the largest hole for the rubber dam clamp, also known as the rubber dam retainer. I'm then going to step it down one size for the molar. I usually like that second hole for most of my molars. And then we're going to rotate again to the third hole, and this will be great for the premolars and for the canine. And then one more rotation to the second smallest hole will be utilized for the incisors. The key is that you try to match the diameter of the tooth to the hole size relatively speaking, from small holes to large holes as we're going posteriorly. I'm going to flip the rubber dam over and now I'm going to express some of this brushless shave soap over the surface. And this is probably too much. We don't need very much. This is just to serve as a lubricant. And it's much better than Vaseline, saliva, or local anesthetic. It's water soluble and it can be easily rinsed out from underneath the rubber dam. Patients never complain about the taste of this product. I'm going to grab the rubber dam and use my index fingers to push the rubber dam over the back of the bow of the clamp. Now another technique of course would be to apply the rubber dam and the clamp simultaneously which definitely has some advantages. The disadvantage though of that particular technique is it's sometimes difficult to get the clamp in exactly the right position without having it impinge on tissue. So now we've got the rubber dam started on the distal and we're going to go back to the anterior tooth and we're going to slide the rubber dam between the anterior tooth and the second tooth. Notice how I'm stretching the rubber dam. I'm securing it on the lingual and I'm pulling the rubber dam facially which gets the rubber dam very very thin and allows it to go between the teeth. Rarely do I need to use dental floss to get the rubber dam between the teeth with this particular technique. So one edge pulling from the lingual and pulling from the facial. It kind of works to almost orthodontically separate the teeth to allow the rubber dam to seat between. Once we have the rubber dam between the contacts, we can then go back to the first tooth, the central incisor, and use your fingernail, with your glove on of course, 
and that's going to allow you to get a little bit of separation so you can, so you can get that area started as well. When I'm placing rubber dam in my patients, I give myself about one to two minutes to finish the entire rubber dam application. You can see here how we have a little bit of rubber dam that's covering over the jaw of the clamp. This is going to lead to leakage. So we've got to get this underneath. So I like using a rounded end instrument like a ball burnisher rather than an explorer or a beaver tail because this can be used very easily in the mouth and it doesn't tear the rubber dam. You'll also notice that you have not covered over the third molar or the eight and we can try to use this instrument to get it up underneath, but sometimes it's difficult to do. And an alternative technique is just to pick the rubber dam clamp off the tooth, grab it with the forceps, pull it away, and then watch the rubber dam flip over. And now we can secure this, sometimes with a little help from the assistant, and then we can reposition the clamp over the area. Now sometimes when you do this, you're going to put the clamp on top of the rubber dam, and then this is not good because you're not going to have a very secure rubber dam clamp. So it takes a little bit of effort, perhaps at first, but you can get this clamp to engage the tooth structure. And once you've got it so it's fully secured on tooth, we know we're good to go. Let's take a look at this application from the side and see how we did. Not bad there on the facial, but on the lingual you can see how the rubber dam is bunched up around the jaws on the lingual. So let's hold the rubber dam down reposition it above the clamp above the rubber dam and then try it again. Not bad. Mm, a little bit of pinch still there. So we're going to have to just play with this just a little bit longer. I'm doing this by myself in my laboratory and it's a lot easier when you have an assistant helping you to hold the rubber dam down on one side while you place it on the other. If you're working by yourself it may take a little longer but it's definitely doable. When you look at this from the facial, you can see mission not accomplished. We have not gotten the clamp jaws below. So one more time, we're going to get this seated in here properly. Okay, let's take a look at this and see how we did. That looks pretty good. The key is to get the four points of the jaws to engaging tooth structure and not rubber dam. Now that the dental floss has done its job, basically protect the patient from aspiration, we can cut it off and remove it. Very easy to do with some scissors. And then we can inspect the rubber dam and see where we need to do some further inverting. And I'm going to suggest that rather than using a beaver tail burnisher or some other type of instrument to try to invert the rubber dam, pick up a piece of dental floss. The dental floss can be used very effectively to invert the rubber dam. I know some people like to use the dental floss also to tie around the individual teeth. And I find that to be uh, unnecessary because if we use the dental floss in this manner, we can invert the rubber dam into the sulcus and it stays put throughout the procedure. It's really helpful if your assistant can be, after rinsing off any lubricant, can be keeping the area really dry. This little triangle, we refer to this as a bow tie can be inserted between the last two of the ice or isolate facially and secure that area. And now we can use the Explorer to invert the rubber dam in the other areas. Looks like this was almost nicely inverted by itself just by using the dental floss. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the facial in super slow motion. I want you to see the activity of the Explorer. How I rotate the explorer towards the tooth as we slide distally. That particular move usually does a really good job of inverting the rubber dam. Now that the rubber dam is inverted, we can inspect it, make sure that there are no leaks anywhere, and we're ready to begin the procedure. Like I said, this takes more than two minutes. I'm doing something wrong. The 
the rubber dam isolation completed, I want to show you how I would place an additional clamp for tooth number 19 if we were going to perform, let's say, an MOD onlay on that tooth or an MOD composite. We now can place the 27 clamp in conjunction with the W3 through this piggybacking technique and gives us an opportunity to restore tooth number 19 without any issues. Thank you so much. The next part coming soon.